Hey everybody, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk the boys. We had a great heel turn at the end of last episode where Stormfront revealed her true colors. She's way more violent and murderous than we may have anticipated. She She's a wild card in the seven for good and for bad. She's as... Um, indiscriminate with her killing as Homelander is and yet she's not showing Homelander any respect either I mean, it's such a cool character defining moment because it's the first time we've really seen her fight we've just seen her personality behind the scenes on a set in the boardroom all these sorts of things doing press and now we finally get to see her in action and what we what she shows us in in action is frightening it's terrifying she's incredibly powerful you know the first reveal of her powers was her just doing a little lightning between her hands for the press but now she's leveling apart like whole floors of apartment buildings and and killing indiscriminately and pinning it on mouse the super terrorist who she ultimately kills in a rather brutal way herself. So she's made a bunch of enemies last episode. Homelander, Kamiko, the boys in general. So I'm very curious to see where where she goes, what happens with her next. It's going to be very interesting. But the boys seem to have um, reached a bit of a truce, or at least their goals are aligned a little more now. Butcher's lost his bargaining card in Mouse, so the avenue for him getting Becca back seems a lot cloudier. I'm not sure what Mallory can offer him at this point, unless they capture another soup terrorist, or super villain as Homelander would prefer you say. And Huey has to owe his life to Butcher now, after uh, Homelander almost made Starlight kill him. Not sure what was going to happen there if Butcher didn't step in and release Mouse. But that's what happened. So, yeah, very curious to see where we go from here. I, I, I started last episode by talking about, okay, here's the new normal. And, of course, last episode came and changed all of that. The new normal is no longer... The, the, the playing field has been tipped on its side yet again. So, Compound V is public. Vought is doing a little bit of damage control, but they seem to be... Um, over that crisis already by diverting the, the new cycle onto the super terrorist that Stormfront saved the world from. And yeah, man, I have no idea where we're going next. That's what it boils down to. And I kind of like that. I, I love a show that's so unpredictable and yet makes total sense. As it's happening, you know, you're never going, well, that doesn't make any sense. Where did that, you know, stuff doesn't just sort of happen completely unexpectedly. But the, the reveals are shocking, and yet in retrospect, it's like, okay, I could, I could see that. that. That makes sense. It, this isn't nonsensical, but it is surprising on a consistent and frequent basis. And I really appreciate that, because, because it means it's original storytelling. It means it's defying expectation and convention, and it's bringing something fresh and new to the experience. So yeah, I'm having a blast with it. I can't wait to jump into this next episode, so let's do that right away. This is episode four, and it's called Nothing Like It in the World. Federal authorities have initiated a manhunt for William Butcher. It's Vought. It's oh, a getting fucking a previously cool from the inside. Inside. Boom. I know who killed Raina. Oh, I could diabolical. Diabolical. Communication is everything. Long story short, um, the caterer was totally cool with everything. Communication. <laughs> What was that about? I love Frenchie's music. <laughs> French hip hop, man. Dead eyed and unemotional as he rampaged through the apartment building, killing. It wasn't your fault. Stormfront was dead eyed and unemotional. Oh! I didn't mean to. Oops. I have been. Shouting up and down the hallways at Vaught, and you know what they're doing to stop another attack? Jack sh Let's show Vaught what they have to do. Be your own hero. Make your voice heard. <laughs> Where's this? There you are. I recognize that voice. Yeah. I was beginning to worry. 
What? The hell? Did he save her something? No, she's dead. This is... What is this? This is his dream. This has just got to be straight dream. There's, there's, there's no other way around this. Are we... Do we have multiverses here? <laughs> what? What? I ever tell you about my recurring dream? I think we just saw Homelander's recurring dream. We can't have anonymous skull-exploding assassins walking around. But if they hit the speaker next, or the president... Yeah. Who's the skull exploder? Liberty. Active in the 70s. She was all over Susan's private server. I found Becca. Oh. We had a deal. I didn't come through. Jesus, Butcher, I'm just giving it to you. Yeah. She has a heart. I wonder if, if her info is is good. Taxi. You get disrespected over and over and over. How this? much shit is he supposed to take? Is this like everybody respects you? A sex robot version of Stillwell or something? Like what the hell? It's very hard not to take it personally. Oh, I know. Mm. Uh. Change back. I'm sorry. Oh. I can only hold a shape for so long before it really hurts. Oh God. It's all good. Oh my little boy, come on. Oh. But it's so disturbing. Doppelganger knows all the secrets, if that's the case. Jesus. Storming an off-the-books Vought compound alone. But you, how is it possible that you're dumber than you look? <laughs> it's Becca. And just like that, he's gone. I got a feeling this mission isn't going to go the way he's planning. Because he'll be back. <laughs> Hey, Homelander. No more lies. Whoa, okay. I told you to kill Hugh Campbell and you hesitated because you're with him. Homelander. And part of me wants to blast his fucking face off, so no. I'm not with him. So tell me, am I lying? <laughs> Nope. You're not lying. Part of her wants to, but most of her doesn't. <laughs> she like an almond joy? Black Noir doesn't like almond joy. Butcher. I'll keep you posted when we find them. Or you can join me. <laughs> oh, not intimidating at all. We risked our lives just to make the world way worse. But no, no, no. That's not true. Look, Annie, they take time. How much time? He has no idea either. I have to go. What's going on? I just, I can't go back to the tower right now. Why? What happened? I can't. Oh? I can't do this anymore. Who's watching Are you the fucking insane? She can't come with us, Huey. She's chipped. She needs this. <laughs> you mean you need this? They both do. Uh oh. Uh oh. They're doing interviews. <laughs> Shockwave. Yeah, they're planning your replacement. Shockwave is just here to talk about Vought for Tots. I swear to God. Good, you're here. <laughs> Tell him yet? Tell me what? Hey, train, you're out. You did great, but we're going in a different direction, so... <laughs> just like that. The fuck? Homelander's making the calls. You used to get my fucking coffee! It wasn't her. Oh, fuck this. I'm not going. Hey, train, you can't run. <laughs> it's your heart. It's nothing personal. Uh, we'll always be friends, and uh, etc. <laughs> He's right. It's not personal because he just couldn't care less. The baby you abort might be super. Well, 
they're th those ads don't make sense anymore. Not that they ever did, but it is the Bible Belt. We didn't stop the fire. I once won a lip sync contest with this song. He's in love. I knew all the lyrics once. <laughs> but they're perfect together. Oh, God, with the Dixie flag, seriously? If you love someone, you will never let them go. Never. Oh, what is this? What are those intercuts? Wow, okay, so he is at the, presumably at the right facility. I mean, we recognize that wall for sure. Are you gonna tell me what's wrong? Or are you just gonna stain my clean sheets with your sweaty despair? <laughs> She was in pain. I wanted to help. You think that by saving her, you can make amends for those children that Lamplighter burned. Man, I want that backstory. What happened to Mallory's family? And her grief. What could this grieving all alone ever do? Hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing Starlight and M.M. interact a little. But my dad, um, he'd take me to Duncan on the sly, and he'd, he'd listen. Baskin Robbins. Every Sunday after church. With his daughter? On um, Pops. Oh, okay. He'd always ask for samples. Each and every flavor, every time we'd go up in there. <laughs> There'd be a line all the way out the door. People would be mad as hell. I'd be sitting there wishing the floor would just open up and just swallow me whole. Man. When did he... 16 years ago. To fathers and sugar. <laughs> that was a sweet little scene. I like that. You're just smearing shit all over your skin. Here. Got to use wet wipes. There you go. You just carry these around with you? Damn right. Oh, oh my God. It's hurt. They need help. No, no, no. This is not the time to be a soup, okay? We're low-key. Not with us here. Okay, so it's... Come on, we gotta go. It's just... Just a moment. It's just an accident. It's nothing sinister. Okay. Jeez. Just assume it's like engineered or something. This butcher in the car. Any place around here without a million bloody cameras. She has to show that she's going for a smoke. Wow, he got back. I thought this was going to take all season. I'm so fucking sorry. You done nothing wrong. Well, that's not true. She cheated on you, Billy. You you denying that? I'm going to get you the fuck out of here. How? No, why you, why you can't climb that fence. Butcher's not thinking about Ryan. I have to go. I don't feel like Butcher's thought this breakout through at all. Butcher doesn't want Ryan, but she won't leave. She won't leave without Ryan. You up? <laughs> That's just a. I want to hang out. Is that an almond drink? Mm-hmm. Nobody likes Almond Joy. That's their second Except Almond Joy. That's it. He's the only one. This is in my top three, for sure. What are your other two? Charleston Chew. A horrible. And Bitto Honey. Jesus Christ. Horrible. Stress eating all day. Oh my God! That was, shit, I, was so good. That was really good. <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> nope. It's harder than it looks. Sleep about... Four hours a night. Chew my fingernails down to the quick. I don't know what a quick is, but. That's what you're supposed to chew them down to. It's like living with a loaded gun in my face. Do you feel that way now? Mm. I got it. 
Clap on. Clap off. I still want to see you. Love is a leap of faith. <laughs> like my last boyfriend was obsessed with Ed Sheeran. No. Two weeks later, he broke up with me. What? What is this? What are these bits from? I don't... What's it about? She's back. I thought she had to go back. I'm I'm a little confused about what what her excuse this time is. Just to quit. How you old enough? It's been lonely yeah. as hell. You know you. It's okay. You know, Ryan's happy, and that's what matters. You're gonna like him. How have you been? Started a private security company. You know, weddings, bar mitzvahs. Oh shit. Yeah. At least she can see through his lies. Homelander, he said you've been chasing after him for years. And what was I supposed to do? Hmm? Let him get away with it. And here you've been fucking living in this shithole. Some part of her thinks it's not so bad. And I think she... I don't think she was raped. I think it was consensual. I think... I think she cheated on him. She slipped. She feels bad about it. Let's talk hashtag heroes so white. The numbers are rather startling. What? 92% of heroes are Caucasian. We've got A Train. He's a black man. We got Black Noir. He, um. We don't know about we black. We don't identify with any race, really, so they're covered. <laughs> and we have a gay hero. Really? Queen Maeve. Wow, he just outed her. Mm -hmm. Scoop for you, Maria. Where's the Wow, man? he just outed her. What did you do to her? She's fine. I set her free. And you. I ended the relationship when I joined the Seven. When I met you. Stop fucking lying to me. Well, best of luck to you both. Oh. Was it so hard to believe that I want you two to be happy? I'm really happy for you. God, he's petrifying. Dear God, he's petrifying. Oh, I got like nervous sweats. He's so scary. We shouldn't feel so calm or safe. Yeah. One super terrorist has already oh, gotten through. Here's Kamiko. More will come. Oh, oh. Go, please. If you will not survive. All right, she's a flyer too. All right, let's meet Liberty. You just leave me alone. I took your damn money, I signed your damn papers, and I have kept my mouth shut. My father was a lawyer. He believed in the law and that nobody was above it, not even Vaught. But see, Vaught wasn't about to let this one black man put his foot on their necks. Mm -hmm. Vaught killed the, his dad 16 years ago. And I'm going to make Vaught pay for what they did to him. And ma'am, from what I gather, what they've done to you as well. They experimented on her, presumably. A little black girl accusing a white superhero of murder in these parts? I was 11 years old. My brother Myron, he was driving. Oh. What's the trouble, ma'am? Oh. Why are you doing this to me, lady? Ain't you supposed to be a hero? I am a hero for killing a black piece of shit like you. Oh, we're getting into the racism a lot this season. Liberty killed her brother. $2,000. That is what my brother's life was worth. Nobody's seen her since. <laughs> oh, no, no. I... She's still keeping track. Right there. That's Liberty. Stormfront is Liberty? She doesn't age? <laughs> oh, the jealousy. I'm the face of the seven, not you. Yay. You don't need 50 million people to love you. You need 5 million people fucking pissed. <laughs> you have fans. I have soldiers. Change with the times. God knows I did. <laughs> Door is always open for anything. <laughs> Planting that seed, are you? I'm, I'm not leaving. 
are you talking about? Yeah. Of course you are. Grab the kid and let's go. You don't really want Ryan to come with us. I know you better than anybody, and I saw it in your face last night. I see it now. It's Ryan they care about, not us. Yeah, and then what? And then Vought raises him without a mother, right? Just start again. Start a new family. I have a son! He's a fucking suit freak! Yeah. The truth is out. I didn't mean that. No, you did. You were always one, one bad day away from pounding someone to death in a parking lot. That's not true. He raped me. And when I found out I was pregnant, I went to Vaught. Okay, he did. Because I knew that you'd chase after him and you would seek revenge and it wouldn't be good for anybody. I can't. Wow. We're doing this mid-season. This is crazy. I'm so sorry. Yeah, they're done. Wow. Still looking? He hasn't left. <laughs> Diabolical. You know, John Wayne Gacy used to give those out to kids when he was a birthday clown? Whatever, I still love them. <laughs> it was fun until it got so horrible. Yeah, what can I say? It's my specialty. <laughs> fun until horrible. We can't do that again. No, 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 we can't. Why? Why? I mean, the, this, is, this is good. But that's just it. We can't afford to feel good or to feel safe or <laughs> to let our guard down. You can't go through this on your own. We're all alone. Goodbye, Huey. Wow. Was that... I believe the secret to a great relationship is to be willing to do anything for your man. <sighs> What is he doing? Thank you for coming in, Gianna. What are they doing? Oh, her, Gianna. I choose her. It's not even a contest. What are they doing exactly? It's Cassandra. Which one was Cassandra? she? The one, the one with the creepy skeletons hugging each other's story? Yes, that's your wife. We're finding him a wife? But I thought I got to choose. You do. And you're choosing Cassandra. <laughs> Congratulations. What on earth? It's about rehabilitating your image and getting you back in the seven. That is what you want, isn't it? So this church is just trying to get a foothold into the seven and they're using the deep to manufacture that foothold. But to what end? Oh, I don't want another doppelganger scene. It's so creepy. Oh, I missed you. No. It's it's oh it's broken. All sorts of relationships ending here. Would you like me to be someone else? I can be whoever you want. I don't need anyone but myself. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Seriously? Hmm. What? Oh my God. <laughs> Look in your own eyes when you come. It's not even gay if it's with yourself, right? Everybody loves you. Their love is your strength. You're pathetic. Oh, I don't need you. <laughs> what am I watching? Holy heck, guys. Where to even begin? Like I said at the start of this episode, the show goes so fast. Things that I th that felt like we were taking all season to build to, they're here already and we're just motoring past them. But huge revelations in this episode. We... Butcher found Becca. I thought that was going to take all season to, to facilitate. But Mallory offered him the location without the bargain. 
of turning over the super terrorist. He went there, he got in, he found her. They had conversations, they had makeup sex, and then she ended it because she was right. She saw through him. She realized there was no way he would ever accept Ryan into, like, he just wanted Becca back. He didn't want Ryan there. There was never any thought about adopting Homelander's son, but Ryan is Becca's son, and she's not going to do anything without taking him with her. So it would have been doomed to fail, and Becca was good enough to realize that. And so she ended it. And and so what does that do to Butcher? Like, what's Butcher's motivation now? Like, is he going to blame all of this on Homelander? I do find it interesting that Becca said she was raped. Because I felt we were leading to a point where it was consensual. The, the way the footage looked when she left the apartment, and I'm not basing it on much more than that, and the way she acted when Homelander approached her at the Christmas party was that she had a moment of weakness. Many people do. And if the most powerful man in the world shows an interest in you, perhaps you do something that you wouldn't normally have thought you'd do. And I thought it was that sort of thing. But apparently Homelander raped her. And she ran from Butcher. Maybe to save Butcher, but also to minimize the collateral because she knew that Butcher would go on the warpath. He was always like that. It's not this incident that made him like that. He was always like that, at least in her eyes. So what, what's Butcher's story now? Why will he just blame all of this on Homelander? Will he blame the loss of his relationship with Becca entirely on Homelander and like double down? Or will he be disillusioned and say F it all and walk away. I don't think it's going to be the second option somehow. It doesn't strike me as an F it all kind of guy. But we also got Huey and Starlight and Annie reconnecting and then Annie ending it essentially at the end for their own safety, for their own to keep themselves focused on the task at hand. I think after what they, they learned about this woman and Stormfront slash Liberty from the 70s, refocus them on why they're taking Vought down. It's not just that they made superheroes, but that these superheroes aren't heroes at all. They're, they have all the flaws of any other human, including racism and homicide and all the rest of it. And we're learning, we're learning that Stormfront is incredibly racist, uh, not just against Asians, but against black Americans and, and she doesn't apparently age, and she's terrifying. We thought she was like the young, fresh blood. No, it turns out she's in her 70s, and yet she's still calling Homelander Gramps. Um, she's changed with the times, and Homelander hasn't, and Homelander's going through a crisis of his own. He's having these super weird rendezvous with Stillwell, doppelganger in reality. But... Uh, <laughs> Presumably that's been going on for a while, ever since Stillwell died, I guess. And that was no longer working for him. Presumably as a result of that little confrontation he had again with Stormfront. She's becoming a very important character this season. She's not just, you know, the, the new the new member of the Seven. She's uh, She might even be like the big bad of the season, which is weird. So Kamiko was ready to at least attempt to rip her head off at that public rally. Frenchie talked her down from talked Kamiko down from doing that, but but revenge is still very much on Kamiko's mind. Homelander killed himself himself just before he, Oh man, just that final scene. So freaking weird. Um, and the whole episode was interspersed with these non sequitur documentary style interviews where women were basically answering what what does love mean to you and, and this woman who talks about um, never letting go and, and love being about um, yeah never letting go of the thing you love uh, apparently they're auditioning a new wife for, well not a new wife a wife for the deep and uh, that's part of this church is we need to find we need to rehabilitate his image we need to find him a, a woman a wife 
and he doesn't really have much say in it. So, what does that mean? What? Why? It 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 seems clear that the this church their their purpose their goal is actually to get the deep back into the seven. But to what end? Is it just to have influence at that highest power at that highest level? Um, is it to turn some more of the seven? I don't know. I really don't know. What is um, Black Noir going to do with the info of seeing Butcher at this site? Do, we, do any of the other seven know about this site? Do they know about Homelander's son? I don't think so, but if anyone does and isn't talking about it, it's Black Noir. I feel like at, at some point we're going to get more info. There's going to be a big reveal about Black Noir, but I might. I feel like it, it might still be a season or more away. Or maybe like the longer we go without ever sharing any information about him, the, the crazier and the funnier it almost becomes. Um, as, as Homelander said in the, the, the sit-down interview and for daytime TV, nobody even knows his race. He doesn't identify. So, so nobody knows anything about him. Like, what, what, what does that mean? How, is, how does nobody know who he is? How does that clear security checks to become part of the Seven, to become a VOD employee? Anyway, I'm curious, but I feel like we may never know. What else? A train's out. A train's out. We're, so we're bringing in a new speedster, and it's probably uh, Shockwave. That would be—he's the most visible other speedster we, we've had in the series. So, does A Train become a villain? What what does A Train do? Like his his heart's on the verge of failing, and Homelander sees that. So Homelander's been like reading people's blood pressure since the first episode. Homelander was gonna kill Starlight. But she told him the truth, that part of her wants Huey dead. And uh, there was some truth to that. A bigger part doesn't. But the show goes so fast, and I love it. Like, every episode is full of so many, like, properly big wow moments. And yet, they, they're not diluted by th the pace of the show. Um, it's just it's just a very big show. There's just so much that happens and it, it feels more like movie pacing almost where there's Just plot point after plot point after plot point and yet We still get enough breathing space in between where we have these scenes like Annie and M.M. Just having donuts and talking about their fathers uh, Which was a really sweet scene really enjoyed that I like when we take characters that don't normally interact in this show and we put them together for a scene and you, and you explore that new dynamic for a beat before going your separate ways again. And that, that was fun. I hope we get more, more little things like that as the show progresses. The biggest thing is this show is just tough to predict. I do feel like Stormfront has become the, the major antagonist of the season. She's certainly the wild card and Kamiko has a vendetta against her. It feels like Homelander will either swing over to her side or remain butting heads directly opposed to her. Her talk may have gotten through to him, but in any case, I feel by the end of the season, the situation in general with Stormfront will rise to a point where something massive will happen. And you know, much as Stillwell was the, the major antagonist in season one, it's not Stan this this season. I think it's Stormfront. But beyond that, I couldn't tell you what's going to happen next episode. I don't know how Butcher's going to react. I don't know what Huey's going to do with the new with Annie's decision. I don't know. I never know what Homelander's going to do next. Yeah, I am so curious, and uh, we'll just have to wait to next week to find out what happens next, won't we? In any case, thank you guys so much for spending a little of your time with me today. I appreciate it so very much. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments about this episode down below. And until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.